okay so after we get the response then in the student answers array in the student answers array um let's see the student answers array in, in that particular index right we set it to user response here okay and so this array will, oh, sorry this method when called will basically fill the fill the array right and once we're done once so basically once we have the array here we call this method which is fill student answer answers array and then we pass in it's going to, it's going to need an array we have that array here student answers we pass it in here and so this is basically going to fill the array with values and now now we have the array so we can now create a driver exam um, object and to do that I'm going to create a I'm going to write it this way to driver exam the name of the class and I'm going to call or basically create um, a variable that's going to hold a driver exam object and so I'm going to call this I'm going to call this uh, object um, driving test now this process is the same as this is the same as trying to create an integer variable and calling it a number int is the type and number is the name of the variable right and so you can think of this also as a type and you can think of this as a name of the variable but when you try to create a variable this way java is going to realize that this is this driver exam type is not part of the primitive data types like let's say int or or let's say um char or car right Ch char or let's say um doubles or float it's going to know that and so it's going to say okay since you're not one of the primitive data types i'm going to look through your folder or look to look to see if you specified a path to any class and so if it looks through the folder or if, if you for example saved your class somewhere else and you provided a path to where the class is it's going to find it and it's going to say okay you are trying to create a variable that's going to hold a driver exam object and so that's what it's, what that's what it's going to do and so now i'm going to create a drive a driver exam object in memory so i'm going to use a new keyword and say new driver exam now we, ha we are with our constructor here in our class the constructor we define it in such a way that it's going to accept in a student array given right a student array and we have the student array um, here because by, uh, by this point or by this time it will be filled and so we can pass the student um, answers array here to this um, to this uh, constructor and in our class or this object will have a field will have a field number number uh, sorry student answers field all right it will have it filled already and so once we have that ready we can just display we can use the methods in the class to display values right let's actually create uh, another method here all right outside the main to, to display our uh, answers to, to basically get display our or show, show the result and so I'll say that I'll create a public static void and I'll call it show test result All right it's it's void because it's not really going to return anything it's just going to print out information for us to see All right and so show test result it's going to let's define it in such a way that it's going to accept in a driver exam object right because we're going to use a driver exam object to basically access or we're going to use the, these methods on a driver 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 exam object and so let's pass in or let, let's define a parameter over here and pass and then when we call this method pass in a driver exam object so we can be able to use a method on the object that was passed in to this show test result method right and so I'm going to define it in such a way that it's going to accept in a driver exam object I'm going to call it um, driver exam object right and so what I want to do first of all is display let's see system let's see um, the first thing I want to do is basically display the number of correct answers and the number of incorrect answers right and so let's say system dot out dot print ln and let's let's create a string here and say that you got um, and then now let's use object which is driver exam object 
and then let's use a method to get the correct answers right total correct that's a method it returns the total correct answers so let's say you got driver exam object dot total correct let's concatenate with a, with a string we're basically forming a string you got this uh, correct answers and let's continue the string and driver exam object dot total incorrect remember we have another method I'm going to break this line into two okay where the plus is just hit enter and continue it's still the same line but I'm just I've just broken into two lines so driver exam dot total incorrect right that's how we saved it here the capital I and so we have a method called total incorrect this one that returns the total incorrect answers right and so total incorrect and so you got the total correct answers right and the total incorrect answers let's continue the string incorrect answers okay and then what else do we want to display um, we want to also display if they passed right if they passed um, actually no let's just before that let's display before that let's display the uh, questions missed right and so we know the questions missed method over over here returns an integer array but we know that if it returns an integer array we need to go through it with a loop to basically we need to go through with a loop to basically display the uh, elements in there right and so let's use a loop similar to what we had here remember that same loop we are in we are using index to go through all of it so for int index right is equal to zero as long as the index is less than this time around we're dealing with the array that's going to be returned from the questions missed method when we call it right and so as long as the, in the index is less than we have the object here to call that method right we have the object here as long as it's less than driver exam object dot now we can use the method questions missed which returns an integer array of the questions missed right and so int index equals zero as long as the index is less than driver exam object dot questions missed um when we call it it returns it returns that array right it returns the array and so we can apply the dot length method right to make sure that to make sure that um, the index is less than the length of that array do what's in the loop and before we come back to up to check to see if the index is less than a driver exam object dot questions missed dot length add one to index and so this is basically allowing us to go through the array that's returned from the questions missed um, method and so at each time we want to display so system without the print Um, the element right so we're going to use the object which is driver exam object dot question smith which is going to basically return that that array right so we know that this is the object and this is the method that's going to return the array and we know the way we access el uh, array elements is with the index right and so it, it looks weird but it works this whole thing is one Driver exam, is, exam object is the object. Questions missed is the method over here, which returns an array. And then index is basically going to be used to refer to that particular, print out that particular slot. And then let's concatenate it with a space so we just see them. But before that, let's have a string and say that um, you missed questions and then we just concatenate it with the questions right and then let's determine whether or not they whether or not they passed which we have a method here pass which returns mm -hmm. true or false right which returns true or false and so let's say that um, if passed if so basically all this will be in short test result right and so if 
Um, so using print ln over here will actually will actually display the like the questions line by line because after print ln displays one one statement, it moves the position from where it's at to the next line and then displays the next. It creates a line break after after it displays each element. So let's use print just print, which is basically going to print something and then it's not going to move the position from where it's at to the next line. It's going to keep the position where it is. And anything that comes at, or if this print statement is called is called again or it's is run again, it, the next element is going to continue on that same line. So I'm using print for that. Um, yeah, I'm using print for that. And so let's use the past over here. So if pass, we know pass returns true or false. And so if I use use it this way, if if I have the object here, so I can use it, use the method with it. And so if driver exam object dot passed, okay, dot passed over here, it returns true or false. Oops, sorry, cancel. So it returns true or false. Where am I? <laughs> okay, so if driver exam object dot passed, this whole thing returns true or false. If it returns true, then what's in this block will run. I can also say that if driver exam dot pass is equal to true. But I don't have to do that, right? This will work, but I don't have to do that because pass this method here will return true or false. And if this if, if it returns true, then this whole Boolean expression expression will, will evaluate to true. And so what's in this block will run. If it doesn't evaluate to true, then what's in this block won't run. And so if it passed, if 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 the if it passed, right, if it's basically 15 or more, then this display a message system dot out print ln and say you passed else then let's display a message saying that you didn't pass how you failed oops I, I missed a D here you failed okay so it looks like we are almost done and so over here once we have the object here now let's call this method to display or show the test result so I'm going to call show test results and pass in the driver exam object which I have here as driving driving text. Oh, this is supposed to be test. I forgot to right so test. All right, so I'm going to pass in the object which is driving test. I'm going to pass it into the show result because the show results method over here was defined to such a way that in such a way that it's going to need a driver exam object, right? And it's going to work with it and display our information for us. So this looks like the main the main is done. Number of questions is 20. We define a string array. We fill the student string array with the student answers. We create a driver driver exam, passing in the student answers to compare with the original answers, and we show result to see if the person passed or and how many questions they got wrong or, or correct. And one more thing over here. Once we have the response, because I see I can see there's a, there's an input validation here. We'll, we'll come back to that. Well, let's compile this and let's save it in the same location like I said before. See if we have any errors, and we don't have any errors, so that's good. Let's run this, and it says answer question answer for question one. I'm going to type in for now. I'm going to make sure I type in the correct one because we don't have any we don't have input validation. I'm going to make sure I'm typing in A B C or D. So A, I'm going to I'm going to keep typing A A's, and see how many I got correct. See if we have any errors. Okay, so wow. <laughs> okay, I'm doing something wrong. You got six correct answers and fourteen incorrect answers. You missed questions one. You missed questions two. You missed questions. Okay, so um, it should I should do it differently here. You missed questions. Okay, so uh, instead of you missed questions over here, let's just display the numbers, right? And then the you missed questions, I'm going to put it above it. So this is this is the loop that's basically displaying the questions I missed. Right after, right before it, right before it. Let's just separate this. Right before it, let's just display the system dot out. Oops, sorry. System dot dot out dot print ln and display a message saying you missed questions, right? And let's keep this as a print so that it doesn't move the um, the cursor to the next line. So you miss questions, and then now let's have the loop display all the numbers, right? Let's try again. Okay, so 
Um, I'm, I'm actually speeding through this a bit because I'm in the school library, <laughs> my school's library, and I have like, you can see the time here. It, it closes at 11. I have about 14 minutes to finish this. And so I want to also t touch on the input validation. And so that's why I'm, I'm speeding through this a bit so I can finish it before the library closes. All right. And so I'm going to type in ace, all ace, to make sure this is working. Oops. Uh, what did I do? 13, 14. All right. Let's just do this again because I uh, compiled this. Did I? Yeah. I, can't, I think I typed a ace here. Compile this. Run. Make sure I'm typing in the correct values. Okay. You got six correct answers and 14 incorrect answers. You missed questions one, two, five, seven, nine. Okay, so this should be f this should be 14. One, two, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right. The reason why we are seeing zeros is because remember when we defined the correct answers array that was returned over here. Define, where is it? Questions missed. The questions missed array over here. We define it with the length of the question, the question numbers, right? And so all the, all of the slots initially when we did this had zeros. When we over overwrote it, right? Oh, we like w w when we um, filled filled it with values, right? The questions missed array. Um, we overwrote, or we we um, when we filled it, we replace anywhere that there was a question missed, we replaced the zero with the question number, and so. We, it was possible that the, the, the student would, it's possible the student won't get all the all the slots or all the questions missed and so the array is going to be filled with questions that, that was that were missed and questions that are basically slots that were that weren't missed and so the slot for the slots that weren't missed it's going to stay at zero so that's why we see zero here and so in this array we're going to have either zeros at some place and then basically question numbers uh, of where they got uh, wrong, and so when we are displaying this array, we can see that anywhere th if if the element is not zero, then display it. In that case, we've eliminated that, and so I can do that quickly here. Over here, before it prints the statement, I can say that if if this value, the driver exam object dot question missed, and with a particular index. Right, I'm going to paste it. Is not equal to the exclamation sign means not. So not equal to zero. All right, then print it out. And so I'm going to copy this print statement and paste it in here. All right, so then we fix that. Now let's work on the input validation quickly before um, the library closes and I have 10 minutes. <clears throat> I, you know, I wish I did this. I, I wish I did it a bit early, but um, I was working on something before. And so sorry about that. But for the most part, I think we, we've got it working. And so over here, once we get uh, once we get a response, right? <coughs> Sorry. Before we store it in the array, let's make sure it's a valid response. And so let's create a while loop to check that. So while, right? Let's let's say that while the the answer is not a, b, c, um, and d. If if it's not any of those values, then tell the user to type in something to, to type in a, a valid value. And so I'm going to say that while the user response. Remember, we're dealing with strings here, so we, we have to use methods like we did in our class when we use methods to compare equals ignore case, right? So while the user response dot equals ignore case, let's just ignore the case. Um, I'm going to say Now this th now this means while the user responds it does equal, it equals ignore case is equal to a right but I'm going to use exclamation sign to mean not while the user responds dot equals ignore dot um, equals ignore case basically while the basically this is saying that this exclamation sign ha now has negated this and said and said that while the user's response is not equal to a right um and they, and let's let's use end right instead of or so making so so while all this is true while all this is true then let's display a message telling the user to type in a valid value so while the user response that equals ignore case is equal to a and the user response all right so actually what I, what I meant to say is while the user response or equal to ignore case is not equal to a 
right? I think I said that, and I'm not sure. Okay. And the user response that equals ignore case is not equal to B, right? And the, so let's break it somewhere around here, right? And the user response that equals ignore case is not equal to C. And these the user response dot equal response the, sorry <laughs> the equal the equals ignore case is not equal to D. Now I'm missing exclamation sign in front of all these. So this is saying that while the user response dot equals ignore case is not equal to A, and at the same time the user response dot equals ignore case is not equal to B, and right the two ampersands means end, end right it means end like logical operators right it means end, and at the same time the user response dot equals ignore case is not equal to now the exclamation sign means or oh, uh, not right it means not. If it's not equal to C, and at the same time the user response that equals ignore case is not equal to D. If it's not if if any of if if all these are true, if it's not equal to any of these, all right. If it's not equal to A and it's not equal to B, and at the same time it's not equal to C, and at the same time it's not equal to D, then the user type in something else. And in that case, then let's display a message, all right? And let's say that let's copy the same message above and say that. I say, and I'm going to actually use in capital letters and say. In capital letters, and say valid answer for question number. Right, so still using the index to rep represent that question. I'm going to use valid. So basically, while the user types in anything other than A, B, C, or D, right, it doesn't matter if it's cap lowercase or uppercase because we're ignoring the case. Then tell the user to type in a valid answer before you go ahead and store that response in. Um, the, the student's answer, the student answers array. But the thing is, if we tell the user to enter a valid response, right? We have to. I need. I, I missed my semicolon. We have to ask the user to to. We have to get a new response, because otherwise we'll be dealing with the old response. And so we ask the user again, using user response. We ask the user again to type in a new value. If we are saying that the old value was wrong here, then we the user the first of all, the user types in uh, the first value. We check. If it's not a correct value, then we get a new value and we check that too, right? So that's what we're doing. So let's compile this and run this for the last time, making sure that it works. I'm, I'm confident this will work. And then we'll wrap it up here. But for, for the most part, I think this, this works. So answer for question one, I'm going to type in all A's. Oops, I messed up again. And I typed in A, A A's. All right. So compile this, run. All right, so A. Right, so you got six correct answers and fourteen incorrect answers. You missed questions one, two, five, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, basically, and you failed. We can see it here. And so, because we got six, we we uh, we failed. And so, I type in all A's, right? Let's see. Let's look at answers. And so, how many A's we have? So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's correct, right? We got six because I type in all A's, so we got six correct. Now let let's let me type in again. Let me let's run this again so I can type in the correct answers here. So I'm, I have the correct correct answers here. So let's use that. And so I'm going to type in B, D. Like number three is A, A, C, A, B, A, C, D, B, C. Let me keep quiet. I think I think I'm annoying some of you, if not all of you. Okay, so now I should get everything correct, right? So I'm going to hit enter. Now it says you got 20 correct answers and zero incorrect answers. You missed qu you missed questions, right? I should I should I should have a, a an if statement to basically say say something like you didn't miss any questions, right? If 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 I really didn't miss any question, but now I don't have any questions that display telling me I missed it. It, ju it just says you missed questions, right? Because you know this is just a statement that displays, right? The rest will. The rest will basically, if, if there are questions I missed, it will be displayed after this. But because there are no questions, nothing will, nothing was displayed. And but but the thing is, we can also see here that I it, I passed right because I had twenty more than fifteen, more than fifteen. All right, so um, it's time for me to leave the library. It's about um, four more minutes to uh, to close. I I think I I tried. I thought I wasn't you know going to be able to finish this. Um, 
but um, I apologize for speeding through it if um, if I did I'm sorry yeah if I did I'm sorry but I for the most part I think I, I did everything we did everything the program is working let's compile this making sure everything is working um, try with random values all Bs see what happens and so you got four correct answers and 16 incorrect answers and you missed questions these, these, these are the questions we missed you failed let's count it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen that's correct so we missed 16 incorrect answers these, these are the questions we missed and you failed because we didn't get 15 or above and so let's check to see if there are four B's so one B here 2b here, 3b, and 4b. So that's correct. And so this program is, is working. So once again, I apologize for speeding through it. I hope that um, you have, well, we, first of all, the, the, the program works, right? But I hope you understood it. If not, if you don't understand it, please comment down below as always, and I'll do everything to respond to them, right? Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Have a good night. Have a good day. Have a good sleep. Have a nice time. <laughs> That's what I say all the time, right? I mean it from the bottom of my heart. If you have any questions, comments down below. I'll do everything to respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time with the next video. All right. Bye-bye.